Hello, and thank you for joining us. Today's webinar is Purge and Trap Moisture Control Tips with the Atomics XYZ and Lumen. Our presenter today is Amy Nutter, our Senior Application Chemist for Teledyne Techmar. We will be taking questions today as time permits, so please feel free to submit questions throughout the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be available within the next few days. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to our presenter, Amy Nutter. Thank you, Shelley, for the introduction. I'm Amy Nutter, Applications Chemist here at Teledyne Techmar. And today I will be discussing tips for better purge and trap moisture control. So let's get into it. We will cover a quick overview of the purge and trap technique and our products, why water vapor is bad and how do we deal with it, common method types and optimization, and then we will tie it all together in the end and hopefully have time for a few questions if you have any. Now let's get into how purge and trap works. The theory of purging and sweeping the sample with an inert gas is called dynamic headspace theory. Sounds simple, but it's a very complex process. Purging a sample to extract analyze is a gas extraction. In purging a sample, the system is no longer at an equilibrium. This is because the VOCs that move into the gaseous phase are constantly being removed by the purge gas. Continuously replacing that headspace causes a disequilibrium in that there's always a higher concentration of VOCs in the liquid phase than in the gaseous phase, creating a net movement of VOCs from liquid to gas, extracting the VOCs from the sample more efficiently and improving on sensitivity. Then the gas is swept away onto the trap where it is then concentrated and released to the GC. A basic purge and trap consists of five main parts. The sparger, flow control, six port valve, analytical trap, and the heated transfer line. The sparger is the glassware on the front of the instrument that receives the liquid sample to be purged. Purging the sample extracts the VOCs by dispersing inert gas through the sample matrix for a preset time and flow. This flow is controlled by a mass flow controller or a pressure regulator that monitors and precisely controls the gas flow rates throughout the entire purge and trap process. From there, the six port valve directs the gas containing the analyte to the analytical trap for concentration. By back flushing carrier gas through the analytical trap, the six port valve directs the VOCs to the GC for separation and detection. The analytical trap is used to capture and release VOCs swept out of the sample by the purge gas. Trapping the VOCs creates a smaller band of analyte traveling to the GC column, producing greater signal to noise ratios and lower area to height ratios, generating sharper peaks and better sensitivity and resolution. Once VOCs are captured, the trap is heated, causing the VOCs to desorb. Carrier gas is used to desorb VOCs off the analytical trap and carry them through the heated transfer line to the GC. Teledyne Techmar is the market leader for purge and trap in our nation, and we offer several different options. The Lumen purge and trap concentrator shown on the right is our standalone waters only concentrator that can be paired with the Aquatech LVA auto sampler. And we also have the combined auto sampler and purge and trap concentrator, the Atomics XYZ, shown on the left, which is capable of analyzing soils, solids, and water samples. So why is this water vapor bad? There are a number of reasons why we don't like water vapor in our system. The water peak will minimize the sensitivity of our early eluding compounds, including our gases that come out with the water. The gases are hard enough to analyze as it is, so when the sensitivity of them is re reduced even more by water, it becomes just that much more difficult. Water causes compounds to co-elude and shift in retention time. So from one sample to the next, 
compounds are moving around, which makes analysis harder. Moisture can also cause poor peak shape, even in compounds outside of the water peak. So once the water is introduced into our system, it starts to wreak havoc on all of our compounds. Some say water doesn't affect the column phase or lifespan, but some have seen an effect, especially if you're running a lot of samples at a time. Water can shorten the life of your GC column and cause vacuum issues if you're using a mass spec system, which can lead to shorter filament lifetime and cleaning the source more often. So how do we deal with this water? On the purge and trap side, we can look into things like what kind of trap we're using and is it the correct trap for the method? Sample purge temperatures, are we purging the sample at a higher temperature to drive out those VOCs out of the solution better? Uh, there are trade-offs to this, though, regarding adding additional moisture. Uh, possibly dry purge settings are not optimized, or maybe there's too much desorb time, or you're not desorbing at the correct temperature. On the GC side of things, we can look into our split ratio. So we may have our split ratio set too low, allowing too much water to get onto that column. A long water peak can be a sign of a bad column and a sign that it's time to replace the column. And on the mass spec side, uh, we can look into those vacuum issues. And if you don't have adequate vacuuming, then the water that is getting into the mass spec is causing more problems than it otherwise would. Purge and trap methods can be broken down into two major categories. Water methods can be further broken down into drinking water and wastewater with in vial purge and traditional sparger purging. And soils and solid methods are further broken down into low level samples, which are typically purged directly in the sample vial and high level samples, which need to be diluted through a methanol extraction. Purge and trap just introduces a tremendous amount of water vapor to the GCMS. So what are specific method optimization solutions to help deal with this? Through Tecmar's moisture control system and application control, Tecmar has focused a large amount of effort on, effort on improvements to our moisture control by creating an improved moisture control fitting on the Atomic XYZ in Lumen. Here are some of the areas in which we can optimize water control in the purge and trap that we will cover today. Trap selection, sample purge temperature, dry purge settings, desorb preheat and desorb, primarily the length of desorb time, and then finally our fake cleanup at the end of our sample, making sure we adequately remove any leftover water so that we don't accumulate water in our system and cause water peak issues in our chromatogram. And then finally, there are some parameters in the GCMS that can be optimized uh, for water control as well. The trap is responsible for retaining the VOCs during the purge cycle and then releasing them to the GC upon heating. Once transferred to the GCMS, VOCs get separated and detected. While most standard methods define the dimensions of the trap as well as the recommended packing materials, there are multiple packing choices that can be substituted as long as they meet the analytical requirements of the method. Here's a basic breakdown of a few of the traps uh, that we compared in a study. Uh, these traps essentially retain everything except the Vocarb 4000 doesn't retain two cleave very well. And the number three trap has no dry purge capability. So here is where our moisture comes into play. You know, if you have an application where moisture is a struggle, you definitely don't want to use a number three trap. Uh, we would definitely recommend to use a number nine trap or the Vocarb 3000 or 4000. This is an overlay of the selected ion 94 bromomethane with all four of the traps that we compared. 
Generally, that number three trap struggles with low insensitivity on the gases because of the water vapor interferences. With it not being capable of dry purge, more moisture gets transferred to the GC. And the number nine trap was designed to specifically improve the recovery of bromomethane. So when we look at this graph, bromomethane recovery is almost double on the number nine trap than it is in the other trap with the number three trap having the least amount of response being hindered by that waterfront, followed by the Vocarb 3000 and 4000 um, with about the same recovery. Is your sample purge temperature too hot? An increase in sample purge temperature always increases the purge efficiency with which VOCs move from the liquid to the gas phase. But there is a trade-off here. The amount of water vapor that makes it onto the trap doubles for each 10 degrees C rise in sample purge temperature. As we can see here with 1122 tetrachloroethane in water, displayed are various purge temperatures and percent efficiencies. And as you can see from the temperature jump from 25 to 40 C, you get about a 24% increase in efficiency but from 40 to 60 degrees C, you only see a 10% increase in efficiency. So what we can see here is an opportunity for method optimization. We don't necessarily want to go for that highest purge temperature our method allows or the highest purge temperature that our purge and trap allows because of that increased water vapor onto the trap, which is not good. And as we continue to increase purge temperature, we are also seeing a big difference in, in the increase in efficiency. Therefore, the amount of water we are putting onto the trap isn't worth the additional recovery we are getting. So it's definitely about finding that sweet spot for your compounds of interest. Another way to control water is through dry purge which is the flow of clean, dry gas through the analytical trap just before desorb to remove moisture. Typically, the larger volume of dry purge gas we put through our system with a high flow rate, and the longer that we do dry purge, we are going to remove more moisture. The trade-off here is that if we go for too long or if we use too much gas, it can also remove the lighter, more volatile compounds of interest from our trap. With Tecmar's improved moisture control fitting on the Atomic Sex YZ and Lumen, the moisture management is so efficient that we can reduce or eliminate the need for dry purge altogether. This innovation can get the customer anywhere from one to five minutes of time back per sample, which is a huge time saver and increases sample throughput. Here we have an overlay of the selected ion 18 and water from the lumen uh, versus the older model purge and trap the stratum. They have the same method parameters of a one minute dry purge and a five mil sample purge. And as you can see with the new moisture control fitting on the lumen, which is also on the atomic XYZ, it outperforms the older model Persian traps by reducing the amount of water transferred to the GCMS. Right. And as shown in the graph, we evaluated a zero minute dry purge time to a three minute dry purge time and as you can see, the older model purging trap, as you increase the dry purge time, the more water it does reduce. But even at three minutes, it doesn't reach the level the newer model lumen and atomic sex YZ moisture control fitting perform at zero minutes of dry purge. So if you're in a laboratory that runs a lot of samples, being able to save three or more minutes per sample can really improve on sample throughput.
We can adjust our desorb time to help reduce the amount of moisture we put onto the GC. So a longer desorb time means that we're going to remove more of those compounds from the analytical trap and move them to the GC. But that also includes water. And that might give us a longer water peak. If we shorten the desorb time, we can move less of that material to the GC and we will have a shorter water peak. This gives us an opportunity for optimization, both in the length of our desorb, but also in the temperature of our desorb. A rapid increase in temperature during desorb preheat can drive moisture out of the sample, and the final temperature of desorb ensures that moisture stays out of our gas flow and, and in everything that we transfer to the GC. So shown here, we have five mil sample purge and a range of desorb times from 0.5 minutes to four minutes. And with that four minute desorb time, the water peak is going all the way out to a retention time of five minutes. And in contrast with a 0.5 minute desorb, that water peak is gone within two, two and a half minutes. Our research shows that the compounds of interest are out within two minutes, and in some cases, as soon as one minute or 30 seconds of desorption. The amount of time uh, that gives us uh, is enough compound transfer to the GC to give us the kind of sensitivity that we need. Anything beyond that one or two minutes of desorb is only introducing water vapor into the system. So by shortening that desorb time, we can significantly reduce the amount of moisture introduced to the GC. Shown in the graph and table, you can see how much moisture is reduced if you shorten the desorb time. If the amount of water transferred to the, D to the GC at a desorb time of four minutes is equal to 100%, at 0.5 minutes of desorb time, we only transfer 13% of that to the GCMS. This is significantly less water being transferred to the GC and a huge time savings as well. This is the old style atomics and the atomics XYZ running samples at the same parameters. And it just shows that the same amount of desorb time uh, the new moisture control fitting on the XYZ cuts that water front and down significantly. Bake removes all the moisture that we have accumulated in our system during the purge and trap process so that we can continue to remove water from each sample to follow. Our bakeout also helps with preventing carryover. The temperature that we use for bake is dependent on our trap, so we want to make sure that we don't overheat our packing material, causing a breakdown of our absorbance. Areas of optimization here would be the length of bake and the temperature. With our improved bake mode control, we can create faster flows and higher temperatures, which means that we can bake for less time saving extra time per sample. Improved trap cooling leads to less downtime between samples as well. So making sure that we get hot enough to, and our bake gas flows through the trap long enough to remove all that moisture without going for too long. A good bake gets the water out of the trap and the moisture control fitting to make sure it's ready for the next sample. And lastly, not just through our hardware we've designed, but we can also choose smart method parameters on the GC side to help with our water. We can continue to control moisture by using shorter, narrow bore GC columns, and that'll help us adjust our split ratio. A higher split ratio means more of that desorbing gas coming into the inlet is going off to vent and less of it is gonna go onto the column. 
a higher split ratio means less water going in to go to the inlet and onto the pollen, but it also means less of our target compounds are going there as well, because those can go off to vent. If we have our split ratio set too high, we will start to lose analytical sensitivity. Less water going into the GC column means less water that's getting into that mesh spec as well. And this can extend filament life and allows for lead source planning, which is a huge time saver because that is a long process. So both the atomic XYZ and the lumen have the improved moisture control fitting that increases sensitivity and extends routine maintenance intervals. Both have mass flow control, which is independent flow in all nodes, allowing for optimized flow rates during the purge, dry purge, and bake. Higher flow rates means less bake time. And our trap cools 20% faster than other concentrators. And a faster cooldown means faster cycle time. Overall, Techmar's improved moisture control fitting on the atomic XYZ in the lumen and application control, like choosing the correct trap for your target analyte, purging your sample at an optimized temperature, possibly adding in some dry purge if you need it, shortening your desorb time and adding in adequate bake time to clean up and remove moisture from the system from sample to sample are all the things that you can do to improve the moisture control and sample throughput of your VOC analysis. I would just like to thank you again for taking the time to join me today. Please check out our website for all of our latest application notes. Um, and those definitely include some of these method parameters that I talked about today. So you can just go online, find the method that you're using, and you can see the parameters that we use. And you can go online to visit, visit our online store as well. And you can follow us on social media. So now I can take a few questions. So I have a question about what column uh, that we typically use for VOC analysis. We typically recommend a VMS column, either a 20 meter 0.18 millimeter or a 30 meter 0.25 millimeter, due to these columns producing short retention times and allowing more split so that the GC cycle time can be reduced and less moisture transferred. And hopefully that also extends the life of that column as well. I have another question here about how do you know when it's time to replace the trap? Uh, if you do have a Techmar product, in our software, you can go back into the sample history. And when you start to notice that the purge and the bake pressures from sample to sample start increasing very fast, then you know it's time to replace because that sorbent material is starting to break down. Uh, compounds that start to cause problems would be artifact peaks of benzene or toluene in blank. And then you will also start to notice that two cleave becomes less responsive. All right. That seems like all the questions that we have time for today. Thank you again and have a great rest of your day.